Welcome to ADGM's Thought Leadership series called Think, where we talk to experts in the fields of finance to learn more about their current views and a bit more about their story. Today, I'm very excited to be with Marie Zaki, who is a Managing Director at Gulf Capital. Marie, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, So tell me a bit about when you first came to the region and how long have you been in the UAE? Um, I'm going to date myself now since I was actually born in Abu Dhabi um, and my parents are ethnically Egyptian and I was born and raised in Abu Dhabi. So Abu Dhabi is really my hometown. Um, I then uh, traveled abroad and sort of uh, studied engineering, studied medicine, worked in consulting, did my MBA at the University of Chicago uh, and then did a full circle and came back to Abu Dhabi in 2008. So let me date that one. Excellent. And you mentioned a number of different sectors there and occupations. What made you move into finance? To be honest, growing up in Abu Dhabi, um, it's always been a passion of mine to look at how businesses performed, uh, not just locally in the UAE, but also regionally and globally. And it would it, it dawned on me that, you know, it could have been common sense that businesses could have, you know, done better, improved if they weren't run by, you know, uh, industry experts that were focused on the technicals only. So a, co- a combination of technical understanding as well as finance would really sort of help catapult businesses forward. So when I studied engineering, it was always my thought process of, you know, going and doing an MBA and moving into finance with the background and understanding of a technical degree like, uh, you know, engineering and having worked in industry before. So that kind of catapulted me forward uh, into my MBA. And then as I was looking for um, places to work at, um, you know, when I was done with my MBA in 2008, uh, I had I was very fortunate. It was just before the global financial crisis. So I was one of those very fortunate people with a number of offers uh, from the U.S., from Europe, from the Middle East. And since Abu Dhabi is my hometown, um, I took it really uh, near and dear to my heart when uh, the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority extended me an offer to uh, help join sort of their or join their private equity department and help jumpstart the direct private equity program. Uh, and so I joined in August of 2008. And that was uh, that was one hell of a learning curve uh, being thrown into the financial crisis as it started in September. And it was uh, it was an experience I couldn't have uh, wished for anything better. Excellent. And I do want to dive into some more detail on the sustainable finance aspect of it. But maybe tell me a little bit about your role at Gulf Capital now and some of the things you enjoy most about your job. Absolutely. Um, to be honest, it's not a job when you're having fun. And I really think that kind of defined my entire career. Um, so... I joined Gulf Capital a little over a year and a half ago um, as managing director, head of one out of five investment sectors of the firm. Uh, sustainability uh, is what we call investments in uh, food security and food sort of sustenance, water, renewables and circular economy. I do have a second hat for Gulf Capital, uh, given that I'm ethnically Egyptian. I also look after investments that the firm has in North Africa um, and, um, and that is my official role. Uh, but my unofficial role is that I really enjoy working with businesses and with my you know, partners and colleagues across our five offices throughout the region, as well as, uh, well, by the region, I really mean the West to East Asia corridor uh, from Singapore to Abu Dhabi to Dubai to Riyadh and Cairo. So it's really, uh, it, it's really a daily, pl- uh, you know, course of pleasure rather than job. And so you mentioned one of those aspects was food security. What are your thoughts on food security, given your focus on sustainability as well? It's one of the most uh, used words, used and abused words, I would say. Uh, But I define food security a little bit differently. And I think it's out of uh, the fact that, you know, I grew up in this region. So I I was obviously blessed with, you know, all the supermarket shelves being filled at all times. We never had a shortage uh, thanks to the leadership and and, and well planning, uh, you know, uh, ministries of this country. Uh, but in all honesty, food security transcends the uh, the thought of, oh, I want to make sure that I have enough food to sustain me going forward. It's about the nutritional aspect of things, because obviously you can overload on carbs and be sustained. You can live your, your life. It's not going to be a very healthy life uh, or nutritionally impactful for that matter. So it's about the quantum as well as the quality of food. And given sort of, um, you know, World Trade, World Trade Organizations and, and sort of the direction that the world was going through, globalization all the way up until 2019 and early 2020 with uh, with the COVID, you know, everyone was going to the lean and mean uh, manufacturing just in time and so on and so forth, which I really never understood as being sufficiently um, adequate when it comes to uh, hiccups in the system. 
And guess what? The massive hiccup in the system was with COVID, right? Where every country was acting for itself, uh, you know, trade agreements out of the window. Uh, you know, uh, I'm producing this food here. I'm not going to export it. I'm going to ban exports for whatever reason and so on and so forth. And so, you know, it finally came to uh, to uh, the awareness of the, of the broader market. The food security is about the quality and quantity, but also having it close to home. Um, so I think that is that is what we focus on the most, making sure that you have sus in, 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 well sustain sustenance, so enough amounts, uh, good quality for uh, longevity, nutritional impact, and so on and so forth. And last but not least, having it closer to home. Um, so a bit reversing the global trend, if that makes sense. So at Gulf Capital, we look at um, adopting technologies that have uh, been proven to uh, produce better quantities, better foods uh, for the environment as well as for people. Uh, and sort of rolling them out across the region, but also making sure that we're leveraging the existing uh, companies in the region to be able to uh, grow them more efficiently. And then do you take an active role in those companies and or how do you integrate them with the rest of the portfolio as well? At Gulf Capital, we um, focus on control growth buyouts, which is interesting. It's almost a misnomer because when people go for buyouts, they're looking for stable businesses that have stable cash flows and all that stuff. In this region where we have 60% of the world's uh, you know, uh, fastest growing consumer market uh, and countries that are where the middle class is growing at unprecedented numbers, if you will, um, this is the right place with, where you can actually target growth. Uh, and so when we do control growth buys, we're basically growing, um, investing for a majority stake in businesses. These businesses tend to grow at double digit uh, numbers, top line and bottom line. And so uh, we're very active when it comes to our ownership. We bring on board uh, our operating partners uh, and um, help catapult the business forward at a much faster pace than it would have done without us as owners. That doesn't mean that we want to boot out our, you know, partners or our entrepreneurs or founders in business on the contrary, but more along the lines of let's tie, let's tie the knot, if you will, and, and, and grow in a better way uh, and a faster way. You know, um, I, when I joined Gulf Capital, uh, just before joining Gulf Capital, I had, I was managing a food security and sustainability fund in the U.S. and Europe, but it was a much smaller uh, shop and it was uh, focusing more along the lines of the technologies and the food tech, if you will, that would uh, that would enable businesses to uh, produce the cost of producing fruit, uh, but also at the same time improve the uh, the quality of the food. So, going from a very small shop to a much larger shop, and before that, um, you know, I was the CIO of the Sheikh Zayed Endowment, and before that, I was at Adia. You know, I almost had exposure to all of the facets of investing. Uh, I was very fortunate to have that, that exposure from large cap to, to, to from mega cap to large cap to small to mid cap to small cap, and even the micro and the startups. So, at Gulf Capital, I, I believe that they've got uh, the best business model really in targeting businesses within this geography. And so, given the different experiences that you've had and the different viewpoints you've been able to get. What are your views on where some of the gaps are and the likes of sustainability in this region? And maybe look at it from both a regulation side, but also a sustainable financing side. I think the regulation is catching up and it's catching up everywhere, but it's it's doing it very, very quickly. It's almost a breakneck, breakneck spe speed. Um, and, um, and if you look at it, 10 years ago, it wasn't even reflected in any conversation that you would have in this part of the world. What, what, what do you mean? Let's focus on the environment. Uh, let's make money. Um, and it made sense because at the time, you know, focusing on the environment was not a lucrative business and it was more of a philanthropic, you know, proposition for 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 the market participants. Today, uh, thanks to a lot of the regulatory changes that have happened globally, but also thanks to the, to the global awareness with, you know, the likes of COP27 last year in, in Egypt, 28 this year here in the UAE, uh, global market participants are realizing that, oh my God, you know, it's not a matter of let's make a quick buck today. If this planet has any chance of surviving in the next, you know, few millennia, let's let's focus on the next 20 years just to make sure that we can get there past the 20 years. I mean, so much for making a billion dollars in 20 years, what are you going to do with it? Take it where, right? So, um, and, and that kind of uh, catapulted this particular region forward when it comes to regulatory environment, but also interest in making money as well as doing good. So we have Gulf Capital focus at the intersection of uh, making money, so the financial returns, as well as impactful, uh, being an impactful investor and impactful partner, uh, whether it's through uh, making sure that our businesses are, or not making sure, but sort of improving the way our businesses think about the environment and affect the environment around them. Uh, second thing is the social, uh, demo social, social demographic, if you will, of 
the uh, the business and where it is and what it has in terms of its uh, population, if you will, of employees. So a lot of our businesses, for example, um, have uh, increased substantially uh, the diversity aspect of of their of their workforce. A lot of the businesses started with X number of uh, or X percentage of women, and by and large, seventy plus percent of our businesses have increased that number during our cold day period. And the percentage of women has increased not just in the you know in the employee base, but also all the way up to the top in the board uh, and in the in the boardroom as well. So that's the E, and that's the S. And last but not least is the G of the ESG framework that people talk about. Um, G stands for governance, obviously, and so making sure that, uh, you know, uh, needless to say, there's only one set of books. We're all sort of complying with all, uh, you know, uh, legal requirements uh, vis-a-vis sort of where we operate as businesses, but also where we intend to operate as we grow these businesses across the various geographies, which is a core tenet of what we do at Gulf Capital. And you mentioned that, obviously, we did just have COP27 in Egypt. The UAE will be hosting it next year or this year actually what are you most looking forward to about cop 28 quite frankly all of the amazing conversations that we're currently having uh thanks to cop 28 with a lot of the um sort of thought leaders um the technology leaders and so on and so forth from all over the world coming to the uae to exhibit um what they have and showcase what they have and what they've done but also you know it's a confluence of uh of multiple stakeholders here where you have the government entities and their reg- regulators talking to the private sector talking to the investor base and, and and financial if you will uh deep pockets to bring forward this you know um uh, this agenda and it's not a matter of you know let's just you know take a global stock pick and figure out where we are which is a great great step because obviously we need to figure out where we are if we're going to define where we're going uh, or make sure that we have a better track to get to where we're going, but also making sure that the financing is coupled and therefore uh, the mitigation is is put in place, uh, making sure that we, uh, as, a, as, a, as a world, really, rather than a country, but as a world, uh, are underwriting uh, the right direction uh, when it comes to uh, our financial drivers. All right. Thank you so much for your time and inputs today. I've watched your career evolve over the years, and it's been great learning more and spending time with you. Thank you, Rachel. Always a pleasure to speak with you.